Exploring the car, hardcore edition. I'm driving. Check this out. The moon is out. I'm in the mountains. This is called Bear Mountain, Harriman State Park over here. The moon was out and I'm here coming to you live, the hardcore editions. It's off the hook. So basically everybody, um, if you're new to my channel, my name is Ra Castaldo and this is called Exploring the Car. And I have my own show called Spiral Radio on the Para X Radio Network. And that's every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Check this out. It's haunting outside. You know, there is a... It's been raining for days. There's a cloud, a mist cloud that's over the mountains here. And there's like some kind of shift in frequency. Shift, some kind of shift happening in the sky even. You can see it. Feeling. It's all around us. But this is my driving editions, and um, I wanted to talk about some updates that's happening. Um, I'll be on the Star Seed Awakening show this Saturday. My show Friday, tomorrow, will be having JoJo Seabacher back on. Um, coming up on Spiral Radio. In April um, is we have what do we who do we have? We got Maria D'Andrea, who's a psychic. We'll be doing uh, Second Sight Seven once again. It's a quiz where uh, I do like rapid fire questions, and she has to psychic intuitively respond with the first thing that comes to her mind. And I've done that with her once before, and it was a big success on the show. Um, I'm going to be having on Masaki Miyagawa from Akaida.com. He's my good friend, and I've had him on several other times. And uh, let's see. I'm also going to be having on Gary Wayne, who is known for his Genesis 6 conspiracy, and he's going to be on for Fallen Angel Friday. And, uh, you know, um, I wanted to touch on also part of my magic series uh, my last part was about goddess Diana and the story that involved her and the moving statue and how I feel that story was put in Charles Leyland's book as sort of a, a misses information by the Malandante or evil witches or shaman the dark shaman and this lady Madalena who in the 1890 was the source for Charles Leyland's book um, called Aradia the gospel of the witches which talks about Strega um, I mentioned how this Malandante witch was basically I feel sent as a misinformation agent for Charles Leyland so he can spread evil, dark, sorceress spells across the world. And this is what happened. I mean, if you read that book, certain, that lady Madalena, that Malandante, she really knew what she was talking about because some of those stories are straight out of the stories that I've heard from the Benandante side. But, the ones that she said always twist the story at the end for a negative way. You know, um, in that story, the way I've heard it was that, you know, Deanna, the statue of Deanna in the garden, every night the statue would leave and, and it would go out, you know, and like, like that. But at the end of the story, um, there was no murdered... Uh, deer left at that person's front stairs and there was no murdered head you know, decapitated head found in the guy's bed. The way the story ended the way I've heard it was that, you know uh, Deanna made it so the families you know, they were always 
putting flowers and wreaths of flowers on her statue. And that family always had a bountiful harvest and always had um, certain, um, you know, they never had a problem hunting and they always had plentiful food for the winter months and stuff like that and they attributed it to putting flowers on Deanna's statue and which is a totally different story it's a it's a very warm story and happy story not the story that is written in Charles Leyland's book which is very evil and dark and you know um I mentioned Charles Leyland as one of the only authors to talk about Strega. There are several others. One of them is Dr. Leo Lewis Martello, who has passed away in the year 2000 and was best friends with my good friend, Lori Bruno. Lori's in her 70s now. I had her on my first episode of Spiral Radio. She's a hereditary Strega as well, but she's from the Sicily line. I'm from the Benevento and... Uh, line which we originated from Lake Nemi and then we moved an hour and a half towards uh, Benevento and then from there we moved to Afragola which is near Napoli so um, I my family is from throughout that part of Italy you know from all the way from northern to towards southern Italy but Lori's family and Dr. Leo Lewis Martello are from the Sicilian Strega lines. They like to use the word mago and maga, which means magic. Um, we were called the Walnut Witches, my family, and, um, and Ben and Dante. So basically, um, Dr. Leo Lewis Martello, um, I enjoy his books because he doesn't write spells in his books. Um, the other author I'm going to mention is an amazing author, and I have some of his books. And um, he is a hereditary strega as well. I think his aunt was a strega and raised him in the old ways. But I was going to have him as on my show, but I decided not to because um, members of my family didn't agree with how he presents himself and. Uh, what he does in his books because some of his books are amazing but there are also parts where he writes and the, the author I'm talking about is Raven Gramasi and he has many books some of them on the Strega some of them on other magic um, on witchcraft in general um, hidden mysteries stuff like that and he's an amazing author like I said and he really knows what he's talking about when it comes to DNA and um, other things as well. And I really do think he does have a way to connect to the holographic universe as well. But what I didn't, I don't agree with, and what my family ancestors didn't agree with is what he does. He teaches online courses, Strega courses. He teaches courses, uh, which is my friend Lori Bruno does as well too. But the thing is that this guy put spells um, on his website, on in his books for other people to read and repeat and use. And when you do that, like I've said in previous Magic Series episodes, when you put out spells and incantations and ways to evoke spirits, when you put that out there, you're putting it out there and it's what's incorporated and what's in, entwined and ingrained inside of that spell, what's imprinted on it is your intention and your will that was there when you first originated that spell. So when someone else repeats it, it's putting power to the spellcaster's origin of the spell and it's adding to his intention and you're giving him a energy you know it's giving more life to his spell making it more powerful and if he's 
putting certain sigils in there for other people to use as well. And I feel that this is very dark. And he doesn't even know it's dark. And if he does, and if he does realize that this is something that gives him energy and power, then he is a dark sorcerer. And I don't want to be associated with that. You know, um, he does have some legit info on Strega, but he just touches the surface. He doesn't reveal, like, inner secrets, you know, which is good. But at the same time, I don't agree with him putting incantations and sigils in for other people to use. Um, if you're going to use a sigil, sigil, then uh, make up your own. Make up your own symbols. Write your own um, rituals or spells. You know, don't use another person in the craft's spell or ritual because you're just adding to the power of that magician and you can see when I see interviews of Raven um, his face he looks like he's from the cult of the dead um, there is not much life left in his face yet he continues to move on so I think there's some kind of soul contract that he's made with these spirits that he summons. Um, you know, I've never summoned the Grigori. Um, they've appeared to me before. You know, they've come to me in a shamanistic initiation type near-death experience I've had. The spirits basically took me. I had no choice. This guy calls forth spirits and other, you know, magicians or what do you want whatever you want to call them they call forth spirits they summon spirits to assist them and when you do this there must be payback they need they want payment so you they'll do you favors they they will do some things for you but at a price you know you know you no longer have free will they your soul is, is, a contract is signed holographically the moment you summon one of these spirits. By summoning them, you're welcoming them, you're welcoming, welcoming them to your consciousness, to your oversoul. And once that is invaded and infiltrated by spirits that have been learning how to manipulate your soul for eons, then you have no chance. The fight is already over because you've already welcomed them, you've already agreed to them. By calling upon them, you've already said, yes, I want you in my life, come to me. I, I respect you, I pray to you, you know, you're, you're already saying this, it's okay to honor certain gods, certain, uh, I think it's okay to honor them and pay respects, but to call upon them and ask them for favors, uh, I really feel this is the beginning of a downward spiral to hell, you know, or to whatever you want to call it, you know, but, um, I'm really glad everybody that you've been tuning into my videos and it's really been inspiring me to step up my game and keep them coming. Uh, I was on the Spearhead Transmission podcast the other night. Thank you guys for tuning in, those that came in. And please tune in Saturday to the Star Seed Awakening show with Misha Johnston. I'll be on her show for two hours. Two hours so I can accomplish a lot in two hours. So, um, that's from uh, 12 p.m. Pacific to 2 p.m. Pacific, or 3 to 5 Eastern, Saturday. So check me out on that, and of course tomorrow night is my show Spiral Radio, the Pyrex Radio Network, 8 p.m. Eastern. And find me at themysticalspiral.com, and I'm going to say goodbye for now, and you want to say it with me? Ready? One, two, 
three. Spiral out.